time has come. We are going to put all the lessons that you have learned and you have practiced, you've watched together right now. This is our capstone test. So here's what we're going to do. Let's say that we have two data sets. Now we have a data set from marketing, which is what we're used to using. And let's say that those are online sales for company A, B, C, D, whatnot. We have that. And we're going to have another data set. And this data set is going to be more transactional. And let's say that these are for sales happening by different sales reps, agents, whatnot by day. So more transactional data instead of aggregate data, like the marketing stuff. We, our job is to put them together and to make a dashboard so that an exec, CEO, whomever can see, hey, which companies are doing well? How much money have I garnered? How much have I spent? How many orders have I received? Stuff like that. We can break it down later by orders by channel or by country or revenue by country, stuff like that. Let's say that that is the dashboard that we're being tasked with doing. So we are going to do it. Okay. Hey, a couple things. I'm going to move a little bit fast because I'm assuming that you have watched the previous lessons and you feel very comfortable doing what we're going to do. So if I am moving too fast, it's a video, pause it, rewind it. No big deal. The name of the game is comprehension, not necessarily speed. Okay. The second thing I'm going to ask you, if possible, try to do this with a second monitor because I'm going to be moving and you don't want to flip back and forth among and between different types of tabs. If you can have a second monitor, it's going to be much, much, much easier for you to see what I'm doing and to move along and then feel free to pause, rewind all that stuff. All right. Okay. First thing we need to do mise en place. We need to go get our ingredients. So these are the two ingredients that we are going to use. The first one is our marketing data set. You have a link that you will have access to and you can get this and we can put it into Google Sheets if you haven't done so already. Hey, if you need to, we're gonna grab this URL right here. And this URL allows us to put this into a Google Sheets connector. The second data set that we're gonna need is this one, a sales data set. And you can see here, we have by day, give me order data, give me these companies, this is all fake by the way. Give me the order amount, cost, the sales rep, stuff like that. So we're going to combine these two things, mise en place. Let's go get these together. Hey, if you don't, if you do not know how to do this, I'll show you very, very quickly, but I would suggest you go look at this video specifically. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Domo. I'm going to go to data right here, connectors. I'm going to go to Google sheets. I'm going to connect my account. If you haven't done so, go ahead and do that. And here I'm going to put spreadsheet ID and I'm just going to copy and paste that one in there. Okay. So I've already done this. And if I go here, I do my type, I have Google sheets, I have mine ready to go. So I have my marketing data set and I have my sales data set, my ingredients. All right, ready? Let's get moving. Okay. So now we have our ingredients. Hopefully you have that ready. Let's go do a quick ETL. I'm going to go here to ETL to the top, right? And I'm going to put in my ingredients right there and right there. Cause what I want to do, I want to append them. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to pick type and I'm going to pick them on my Google sheets. You can also type in whatever you call those two, but I'm going to pick my first one, which I want to pick is the marketing one. And I'm going to make my second one right here, my sales one. Okay. I'm going to go to utility, grab, select columns, connect these two things. I'll say add all columns. That's fine with me. And I'm going to do it again for the bottom one. Why am I doing this? Because I need to make sure that the names are the same. If I'm going to append them, for instance, in the second one, the sales one, I want order date to just be date. Also, what I want is I want that date to be an actual date and not a timestamp. So I'm going to click the green icon that we have here. I'm going to go to data handling and I'm going to change order date from timestamp to date. UT full. Next, what I'm going to do, I want company name, I think to just be called company. That's what I called it. I want order amount to be revenue because that's what it is in the first one cost. I want that to be spend and then everything else looks fine to me. All right, I'm going to do one more thing because I like to keep things very consistent. And I know the second data set does not have capitals for countries and stuff like that. I'm going to go to text formatting underneath text, connect a little circle, a little triangle, click that. I'm just going to pick on something. So I'm going to say company, make that uppercase. 
make channel uppercase. Why not? Let's make lead source uppercase while we're at it. Let's make you can you would make all these, but we don't need to do all for this for this example. Let's do country uppercase and let's do state as well uppercase. Okie dokie, pretty straightforward. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to combine data on the left, go to pen rows, put it right there, little circle, a little triangle, both of those things. I'm going to click that and I'm going to say include all columns because I want everything from all tables. Last thing, I'm going to go to utility again, select columns right at the end, put it right there, hit add all columns. I'm just making sure, ah, see, I messed up portfolio companies, what we called it. Let's change this top one from portfolio company to just the word company so it matches what is down below. And look, I get a little error. I'm going to take that out. Not a big deal. And I think we have everything that I kind of need. Let's run a preview real fast. Let's see what happens. All right, let me go to this one at the end over here. Preview, I have my date, looks good. IDs, fine. You know what we should do? Let's make ID on the second one here. Instead of order ID, let's make that ID. I'm gonna have to remove it from here because I said add all. I'm gonna go to configuration, take out order ID. That way we're just consistent. That's That's normally, this is what happens all the time. You kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Country, state, looks good. Got all that stuff in there. Orders revenue, don't worry about that. Company, okay, looks great. Now I'm gonna go grab data sets, grab an output, connect that output right here. I'm gonna call this thing organization because I do my naming conventions. Domo learning pipe source. You should be a pro at this now. Google Sheets, and we're going to say combined mock data. I'm gonna take that name as my ETL and put it right here for the output. Let's go hit the little drop down, save and run. Okay, that ran, looks good. We have a data set, let's go make a dashboard. I'm gonna to go to dashboard at the top. I'm going to go to manage dashboards. I'm going to hit add a dashboard and I'd like you to call this one demo dashboard and say save and done. And it's gonna be on the left right there, demo dashboard, I'm gonna click it. Here's where we are. So here's how I do things. When we do dashboards, a good way to think about this is you want to go top down, higher level stuff right at the top. You want to give the numbers, KPIs to whoever is reading this, execs, uh, stakeholders right at the top. I think it's very, very helpful. Then we're going to break it down as we go. And we also want to put controls at the top. I like doing this because it allows them to manipulate the dashboard how they want. And what I find is a dashboard is very different from a PowerPoint presentation because a PowerPoint presentation is being talked at you, but a dashboard allows somebody to click and for everything to change real time. And that is very, very, very engaging. So we're gonna hit the big wrench at the top. We're gonna hit edit dashboard. I'd like you to put these pieces in. I'm gonna grab that H or its title. I'm gonna call it controls. I'm gonna go put a divider. I'm gonna do this next one. Let's call this one overview, overview. I'm gonna do another one, divider. I like to do a performance over time. And I like to do one more, and I like to call this one breakdown. So this is kind of the standard that I use as my hierarchy, my schema for how I do a dashboard. So you're going to be able to do it with me and see how my mind works. Let's hit that plus sign on the top. Great new card, visualization, existing data. I'm gonna give you a little pro tip, by the way. I'm gonna remove this thing. And here, if I type in the word, like for me, I call it this combined. And this is the only one that pops up for me. If I click it, this will always just show next time. So I don't have to keep turning it in again and again and again. It kind of saved in here. Choose that data set. All right, perfect. I'm going to go to chart types and I want to put in my controls first. I'm going to go to filters, drop down. And what I want to put in first is company. Let's go grab company on the left, put it into everything. Item group by sorting. I'm going to turn off this summary number and I'm just going to call this top one right here company. And now I'm going to go to general. I'm going to say allow multiple selections and default select text. I'm going to say uh, just company. I'll say choose, select a company. Okay, whatever. And there it goes. And there we go. Now we see everything looks great. Save and close. That's our first one at the bottom. Let's hit that little wrench over the 
the filter we just did, save as again. And the next one I want to do is let's do country. I'm just renaming it. I'm going to hit this little beaker. I'm going to go find country, pop it in there. So see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to save myself steps. 1% better every day allows me to move much faster. And I'm going to click this general thing. And instead of select a company, I'm going to say select a country. Little tips like that help you move much, much, much faster. I'm going to hit apply, hit the little drop down, save and close. And we got it. And let's do one more, just one more. I'm going to hit that again, hit the little wrench, save as, and let's do the word channel. Same exact play. I'm going to go here, hit the little beaker. I'm going to find channel at the top, put it in for everything else. Take it out of sorting. Great general select a channel. Okie dokie. Boom, boom, good. Looks great. You know what I'm going to do? So you see, I have that little blank right there. I like to take this, and that can be because of how data sets emerge. I'm going to take channel, put it into filters, and I'm going to say not in blank. I just don't want to see that. Great. Save and close. All right, we did our three. Let's go to demo dashboard, and I'm going to hit the big wrench now at the top. Edit. I'm going to just drag those three right there. One, two, and Three, uno, dos, tres. All right, I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to turn off title because I already have the select thing in there, so I don't need the title. See, little things like this help you save real estate. Drag that to the top. Boom, we got our controls. Pop, pop, pop. Let's go do an overview section. So now what I'm going to do is watch this. If I hit the plus sign, I hit create new card, visualization, existing data. Again, that data set is saved because I kept the word combined in my search bar. Little, little tip again to move fast. We could have also just picked one of the cards and said save as again. Okay, so what I like to do from here is I want to put the number right at the top for somebody to see what's happening. I'm going to go to popular charts. I'm going to hit single value. And right here, let's go get revenue. It's right there. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to make it a sum of revenue. And I'm going to turn off the summary number. I'm going to. Sure, put in the optional label, don't really need it. And this top one right here, I like to call this tile. That's it, that's for me. And I am going to hit that value format, make it a currency for me. Looks great, I'm gonna go to header, footer, call this one revenue, donezo. Great, click the little orange button, save and close. Now we've got revenue. And next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just hit that little wrench again. Save as, tile is fine, don't worry about it. Hit the little chemistry beaker, and I'm gonna call this next, I'm gonna look for the next word of spend. Boom, and see, here's a little trick. Because I'm taking my time to, in the ETL to rename things so that the columns are the same when I append it, I don't have to go, oh, find order amount and plus revenue for this one. It's just easy, because it's all one column. So little things like that let you move much faster down the line. I'm going to make it a currency. I'm going to change revenue in my header footer to spend. Pretty easy. Save and close. Great. One more that I want to do. I want to hit that little wrench again. Save as. Let's go get, do it again. Let's go get, uh, hit that beaker. Let's go get orders. That's also probably a good indicator. Orders is right there in green is what I want because that tells me it's a number and I have the one, two, three. It tells me it's a number right there. I'm going to hit this header footer, do orders, and we are good. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the format have two decimal places because I want some more context than just 9.8. I'm going to hit that little drop down, save and close. And there we go. We have our overview section. I'm going to hit the big wrench at the top, edit dashboard, drag these pieces right there. Again, one, two, three. Look how fast we're moving. I'm going to grab this little line here, dot, 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 put it up here. Now I'm going to hit edit content, appearance, take off title for all three of them because I don't want to see that since I already have a title, revenue spend orders. I'm going to hit edit content, change background. Let's make revenue a nice green. Let's make spend a nice red. And let's make orders a blue. There we go. Overview. That's what I'm saying. Putting this right at the top 
makes life easier for everybody. Let's hit save. Hey, another thing I want to do, I want to hit this big wrench at the top, hit filter options, and I want to unselect the show filter and PDP icon. That way when I filter, usually a little blue dot appears, but if I, if I take, if I unselect it, the dot goes away. I think it's just more aesthetically pleasing. That's all it is. Okay, let's do a performance over time. Let's do one of them. Let's pick on revenue. I'm going to hit this little wrench, say save as, and we're going to call this revenue Y O Y Y O Y year over year. That's what that means. We're going to say save. Okay, let's hit the chemistry beaker. What I'd like you to do is go to popular charts, period over period. We're going to go to grouped bar down here. We need something in the X axis. We have to go find date, which we rename. So we only have one date column and we made it an actual date format, not a timestamp. Beautiful. We have revenue. So now I'm going to go back here and I want to select current this year graph by month compared to year over year. If you are lost, like what is he doing? We did this previously. It would be a very good lesson for you to maybe go back and review. But what I'm able to see now is a month over month and a year over year chart in the same chart. So I can compare November to October, but I also can compare November to past November a year ago. Pretty nifty, right? Let's do this before I move on. I want a couple of things. Legend, I would like you to put that on the bottom for me. I think that's a better practice. But look, this year is on the left. One year goes on the right, but the colors are reversed. So let's reverse it so it's consistent. Little, little things like that go a long way. I'd also like you to go to data label settings, hit that little plus sign, hit values, and boom, there's our revenue. But look, it's so much stuff. Is that aesthetically pleasing? Mm, let's say maybe not. Let's go to use scale abbreviation, please. Look, breaks it down. And I want this, I'm sorry, I want this to be a currency. So I'm going to click on that number format. Let's do display as currency. There we go. Looks better. Hey, did you see that goal thing? This is really cool. What I can put in here is what if my goal is, let's make that number. Let me show you, for instance, what I'm talking about. Let's make this number 23 million. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now this little line appears. So now I have more context. Remember, I've talked about this before, shape, color, context. That's what we're using when we're making a dashboard. Now I know which months are below that line and which ones are above. We just have some more context now. I'm also going to go to grid line. I'm going to say high grid lines because if we're displaying the number, we don't really need grid line anymore. I'm going to do a couple more things. It's y scale, I'm going to call that revenue looks great. And I'm going to go down to the bottom to colors and I'm going to change something. I'm going to say, Hey, I want that one year ago fill to be, mm, I don't know, this is gray. Why not? And let's make the, this year column, let's make that a dark green. Let's be consistent with what we put before at the top for revenue apply to only this card. Now that's cool. Right now I see the greens to the greens. It's like a piano keys and I have the grays of the grays and I have the greens to the grays if I want to. And I have a context of if maybe a month was below a threshold or a goal that I wanted. Okie dokie. One more thing. You see how I have these years in here for the month. I don't really like that because if we're doing month, we're doing year over year. I just need to know the month name. So I'm going to go to category scale and in date output, I'm going to hit M three times. Mmm. Yum. Boom. There we go. We're going to hit save and close. Demo dashboard. Before we move it up, let's do one other one. I'm going to have you hit that little wrench, save as. So this is good. We're going to call this one cumulative, by the way. This is good because it shows you month compared to month and compared to the same month last year. But what if I was asked, well, are we doing better compared to last month in totality? I don't know. Let's go make that easy to consume. We're going to hit that analyzer. I'm going to have you just change this to running total. We're going to go back here this year month compared to year over year. And because we kept our formatting options, everything is the same. We're going to change this goal though. Let's go here. Let's turn that goal off because we don't need it. Now I can see, Hey, we're actually much pretty much in a line, but this last month, because it's still going, we're slacking a little bit, but for the most part, we're right on target. I'm going to say save and close, go back to demo dashboard. Look where we are. We have section two. I'm going to hit that wrench, edit, 
move that to our performance over time right there. I'm going to make it a smidge shorter. And what I like to do, I don't like to see this by month thing because I think it takes up real estate. So I'm going to go to edit content appearance, turn off time frame. Beautiful. Now our execs can see what is happening in here. Let's do a breakdown. So I'm going to, and we, I would do the same thing for spending for orders, but for the purpose of this, you get it. I'm not going to do it again. Let's hit a little one, a little wrench, save as again. And let's do this one. Let's do revenue by country. Why not? Click that. And we are going to hit that little chemistry beaker. And I would like you to hit period over period. We're going to go to maps, hit the world map. And here we need to put a country name, which we have. We have country right here. I'm going to drag it, pop it in. And now I can see my revenue by country. And what I'm also going to do, I'm going to do data label settings, hit this plus sign, hit values. Let's turn that. Okay, great. So now I can see, hey, where is it? Where are we getting the most revenue, which we have America coming in at number one. Hey, and this is okay. Can we make it better? We can totally make it better. Let's click diverging. Show diverging. I'm going to make the midpoint value, the median, make that a middle range, make that color a yellow. I'm going to say upper color green, lower color red. And look what we just did. We said for the year, show me the darker the green, the higher the revenue, the darker the red, the further away from our middle median number of revenue. So now I have context, shape, color, context. We could easily have put this into a pivot table, into a regular table, but with that being engaging, I'd argue not as much as something like this. Let's hit save and close. Let's go back to demo dashboard. Cool. We have a breakdown. I'd like to do maybe a couple more breakdowns. I'd like you to hit that little wrench again. Let's do save as, and I would like you to do revenue by channel. Let's do that one. Hit save. Okay. In here, we're going to hit the chemistry beaker again. And instead of country, I'd like you to find channel on the left-hand side here, drop it in. And I'd like you to change this format under popular charts. You can either pick horizontal bar chart under here or go to horizontal bar and pick it, pick bar again. Cool. Now we have show me channel, show me revenue, and let's sort it in descending order by revenue. Now I can see, okay, cool. What's going on here? I have revenue. I have by direct distribution partner because I, and I have this blank thing happening here. Let's put in lead source in series as well. Let's see what happens. Cool, that broke some stuff down, but what what are these colors? Let's go to legend. Let's do position legend at the top for both. Cool. I'm also gonna take off this goal, by the way. I'm gonna go to here, get rid of that goal because I don't, I don't wanna see it right now. But look what I have. I have, okay, how much is coming from direct and from sales, from marketing and from direct and marketing and organic and marketing, and then I have Again, this blank here. You know, I don't want to see this little outlier here. So let's do this. Let's go to channel, put it in the filters, say not in, pick that blank because I just want it gone. Good, 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 good. Looks much better. Let's do a couple more things. Let's go to grid line. Let's turn off the grid line. Great. Looks good. I don't need a calculated thing. And this is okay. Can we make it better? We can totally make it better. Let's go to data label settings, show total. Cool. Now I'm also going to do a couple things. I'm going to use scale format. I'm sorry. I'm going to use abbreviation and I am going to take off those decimal places. So let's kick here, say none. I just don't want to see them right now. Looks better, but I want to put something in the middle. So I'm going to go to data label settings in here. I'm going to pick, mm, let's pick value. Watch this forward slash hit that again. Let's do percent of category. And I also don't want those percentages value percent value. Let's put none. Cool. So what we have here and you know, I'm going to do one more thing. Sorry, data label settings, text color. I'm going to make that complimentary. Okay. So now what we're able to do one more thing. I'm so sorry. Data label setting total label style. Let's make that bold. There we go. I like doing something like that. Okay. So now we're able to see, so we're able to see, Hey, show me the revenue 
by channel and within channel, show me the breakdown by the lead source. So now I can say, hey, cool. Not only did I have $80 million that came to sales from direct, but for direct in totality, that sales alone, that team accounts for 51% of revenue. Cool. Whereas organic accounts for 15%. Little things like this. Another pro tip is you want to use the X axis for dates, not the Y axis. It's easier to read Jan, Feb, March, April, May, as opposed to Jan, Feb, March, April, May. So when it's something that's not a date, I'll usually stack it vertically. But if it is something that has a date, I'll put the dates on the X axis. Okay, let's hit save and close. Looks good. Let's do one more. And we're going to go to here, hit the little wrench, say save as, and I want you to call this one detailed table. Say save. Hit the chemistry beaker, please. I'd like you to hit under popular charts, you can hit table. You can also go to table text box if you want to. And here's how I like to start. Clear the top. Just clear everything. Just get rid of everything. I actually like tables because they're very clear and then you can manipulate them afterwards. So we're going to go to date, drop it in at the top. And I'd like you to say this year, I'd like you to say graph by month. And instead of this year, let's change that to be previous last 12 months. The reason why I'm doing this is because what if it's January? Well, this year, you're only going to show one month. Is that helpful? Kind of, but we can do better. Okay, now what I'm going to do in here, let's go put in what we need to put in. Let's go put in mm, revenue. There it is. Let's go get spend. Let's go get orders. And I would like you to make all of these a sum. I'm going to go to aggregation. I'm going to make revenue a currency. Take off the decimals. Spend, same exact thing, a sum of spend. Format currency, take off the decimals. Orders, we're not going to make it a currency. We're just going to say sum. And there we go. Now I have some stuff happening here. Okay, let's do one quick calculation. I'm going to go to add calculated field on the bottom left. And let's go call this one profit. I'm going to say, give me the sum of revenue minus the sum of spend. Hit the little validation button. Green is good. Create calculated field, close it, grab profit, put it right after spend, I think is better. Looks good. Again, let's make that a currency and no decimal places. Okay, we're basically done. Let's do a couple little things to make this pop. I'm going to first go to header row. I'm going to say fill color. Let's make that a dark gray. Why not? Beautiful. Let's go to total row right underneath header. Show total row. Position is before. Fill color. Let's make that a light gray. Cool. Is this helpful? Yeah, a little bit better. I have a total. Can I make it better? I can totally make it better. Let's go to heat map options. Color as heat map. Color theme. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine with me. The green is fine. Let's do independent column ranges. That way we're not comparing revenue to orders. We want to compare within its own range. Now I can see, okay, these are the months where we're doing great, but also we did great on orders in April and January for this thing. Whatever. Let's hit save and close. Demo dashboard, almost done. All we need to do is hit the big wrench, edit, and drag all three of these. Now, what I would say is use your white space. Use it. Uh, you don't have to stack everything in here. So I'm going to put that breakdown of the map right there. I'm going to put this next one right there. And you can either put this table to the right of it. Cool. Maybe open it up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to hit the edit content appearance, turn off time frame on both. Hit save and I'm done pencils down. So what we did is we are able to make a very, very, very quick dashboard, but it has to be useful. So look at this. I can say, Hey, what's my total revenue? Oh, okay. This amount of time. But when was this? What is this for? Well, I have this choose date thing I can pick. Do I want to see this year? Look, everything starts to change. Do I want to see mm, quarter? Let's do previous quarter. Everything changed. What if I want to see? Hey, you know what? Actually go to previous. Show me the last 
12 months and graph things by month. Things change. Right now, though, I'm going to go to default right there, and things change. So now what I can see here, hey, is let's pick on a company. Let's pick on anything that has the word Abbott. I can either pick all these little Abbots if I want to, or I can do this, start typing it in, Abbott, and I could just say, select the ones that I want to see with the word Abbott in it, like that. Okay, so now it makes my life a little bit easier, and I could say, oh, you know what, I actually, do I want that one? Maybe, maybe I don't, but it makes filtering a little bit easier. Hit apply. There we go. So now you can see how things are changing. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna take this filter off for now, just so we can look. So we have revenue, spend, we have orders. We have year over year and a month over month view at the same time. We have cumulative, what's going on there. We have our breakdown by country. We have how much revenue by channel, detailed, all that fun stuff. So let's do, let's do one other test. Let's go back to here. I would like you to pull in, let's do the Abbots again. Just pick on the Abbots and sure. I'm going to just pick on all of them. Uh, but okay. Perfecto. And I'd like you to type in the word company, company. Let's go get our company A, B, C, D hit apply. So now we're grabbing everything that has Abbott or company in it. So now you can see, I can see all these things in here. Cool, cool, cool. Here's where money, so money is higher in China than it is in the US. And here's what's going on here, right? I see all these pieces. Here's where, how much money's coming from direct versus partner. I could see here, oh, look, see color helps with me move my eyes real fast. Now I know April is the month that we did so well in do that. But hey, what if I'm like, you know what? I just want to focus on select a country, United States. Now I can see how much money I am dealing with. I can interact with this dashboard much more than any PowerPoint presentation. I can see, there we go. That's my number. And that's how it has looked over time. And that's the distribution. Pretty fun, right? We did it super, super, super fast. But here is the last thing I will say. I'm going to just clear this. Is the whole point of this was so that you can see all of the skills you've acquired during this journey to understand how to use Domo and to apply it. And hey, if you struggled a little bit, not a big deal. Go back, take the lesson again, learn from it. So when you try this again, you can move a little bit faster. We just got to get better by 1% every day and you'll be flying through this. I guarantee it. Try this with your real data and you will find insights that you can share with your team and you will start making a data-driven culture and you will get people very, very excited. It is a magical thing to witness.